Anyone else think this is the, like, the longest montage you've ever seen? <laughs> Especially the story of the season. <laughs> Condensed first. I mean, there's no point in watching the whole DVD now. <laughs> we know they get yeah, to Cardiff. Full, full of spoiler alerts. I mean, there they are. They're walking out of Cardiff. This is ridiculous. <laughs> uh, we know what happens at the end. It's like two hours yeah. of just a montage. <laughs> I'd buy that, actually. <laughs> a, a special DVD of just montages. Yeah. yeah, just two hours of montage. Oh, yes, please. Well, we're going to be through the montage in a minute. I'm Mikey Burrows from Wolves TV, obviously. Uh, Tim Spears, the Athletics Wolves correspondent. Hello. Yo. He's so cool. And Tom Parry, comedian, podcaster, Wolves fan. Hello, mate. How are we doing? I'm all right. Uh, we're in lockdown. And I know in a minute we're going to hear from the legendary Dave Jones on this DVD as the lads do some pre-season training on this. We are in lockdown, on quarantine. And for some reason, we've decided that we're going to watch a season review Hearing from Dave Jones, Basie Tim, I imagine, talking about, oh, we gave it away last year, so we've got to try and do better this year. Yeah, yeah, just kind of just kind of brush, brushing under the carpet the apocalyptic Devon Lock style uh, collapse <laughs> that was the 2001-2 season, which we don't really like to talk about, and in fact, it's still it's still quite a taboo taboo subject, really. It's like dark internet of of Wolves World. You you don't talk about the 2002 season. If the lockdown well, I mean, goes on long enough, we'll do that season review. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that'd be great. But, like, just stop it 12 games out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah I mean, that, that's, that's the context of where we're, we're at right now, right? The start of this season review is, is what's just happened, which was just the most incredible... Um, incredible into a season but the worst ever imaginable from a Wolves perspective because them locked down the road nicked it off us how old were you at the time um 17 just discovering women and alcohol but football was still still quite important but not it wasn't as important but it still, still hurt a lot mikey it hurt you only discovered women at 17 <laughs> no, 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 sorry. Women in real life is what I should have said. I'd, I'd oh. seen them, I'd, I'd seen image, images of them before that, but this was the real, you know, the real thing. We're going way off tangent here. <laughs> that, that's not going to be the last time. Yeah, no, this is what Dennis Irwin's talking about when he first discovered women. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, oh, I Newcastle pre season. Yeah. Yeah, the the first the first of um of two Newcastle games this season. Spoiler alert. Oh yes, but, that was a great night at the Molyneux. Hang on, don't, let's not jump ahead, folks. We've we've <laughs> yeah, got yeah. quite a few months to get through before we get to there. Do you think that's right, true? Here we about go. The football. F- oh, okay, here we go. No, go on. <laughs> well, I was gonna say, like what Tim said, I think I experienced as well, which is like. You know, you have the real fervour of, like, f- supporting your club through the first kind of, like, through the teenage years. Then when you start to start going out and, you know, getting drunk and going on the pool, you kind of have a bit of perspective and then, then you come back round to it. That's how I... Yeah, that's, that's how so I, true. I, I feel like, like um, you, go, you, you go through the stages. You go through the football stage when you're a kid. That's all you know. Then, then you kind yeah. of go through, yeah, the other phase where suddenly an, an away day at Edgeley Park or go and sit in the park and drink a few cans of Strongbow, um, <laughs> you know, you veer towards the latter. And then in your early 20s, the two combined beautifully with yeah. a five-hour trip to the Royal London before a Wolves game. Yeah, that's it. I don't know, man. Like, I... For me, like at this age, this is when I was probably going to more games than ever because actually I had a job by this point, so I had a little bit of money. Maybe that describes a little bit about me and my character and why I wasn't off drinking and finding women. So how old were you this season, Mikey? I was uh, 18. I think I'd just gone to uni. Oh, he's through. 
Yeah, I was at uni. Oh, George and Dar. George. I love this kit, by the way. This kit's incredible. Really nice, really nice um, lining on the sleeves and the collar. George and Dar was awesome, though, wasn't he? Yeah, this was. Um, he had some special moments this season, I think. Spoiler alert, but. Um, <laughs> yeah, when when he was when he was fit, he was he was unplayable. Warsaw, Tom man, how old were you? I was at uni, so I was down in Kent. So I, my mom, my mom had taken my season ticket at this stage. So, my mom went in the to South Bank. these games in the <laughs> in the Stankulis. So. My mum used to call me after the games to tell me uh, how they'd gone. <laughs> I was down in Kent. So it's quite nice to be doing this season review because I wasn't at most of these games. Well, this is the thing, man, as well, because like, it's not like nowadays you can watch all this like pretty much as it's happened on social media and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of these kind of... Um some of the more obscure away days of this season, they're just like, there won't be videos of them at all and like, not really match reports either because internet wasn't like, real where it was around, but people, websites weren't using them match reports as much. So yeah, there's not, the, when you're trying to research some of the games around this time, there's not a huge amount of information or video available, such as this game, Warsaw at Home. The <laughs> thing is man, like, yeah, 20, what was it 28,000 were at this game? Great. Yeah, probably. Probably. It wasn't there weren't like full houses every week at this point. I think um twelve years of crushing annual disappointment. And, um, got rid <laughs> yeah. of a, got rid of a few along the way. Um especially yeah, what had happened the season before, as we were saying earlier. But yeah, Well like this like, early early twenties. Cause this game must have and apart from that Newcastle friendly, is like the first game since the you've let us down again banner oh you've let us down again <laughs> which i don't know about you tom right tom yeah yeah like the fact that somebody made that before they went to the game always baffles me <laughs> just getting ready <laughs> yeah i mean what did they have two banners did they go to the game with two banners in case the result went the other way what did the other one say? You've finally done it. <laughs> the, the guy's got two banners in his pocket. <laughs> yeah, two banners and no bed sheets on his kids' beds. <laughs> All Johnny Two Banners. It did. It did it, I mean, like it was. I do. I do remember like this, this time feeling like. That was part and parcel of being a Wolves fan. It was just like, it is never going to happen. It just, you know, like, especially after the season before this, there was just such a sense of, like, the inevitability of, like, disappointment was just, it was just ingrained into yeah, being a Wolves fan. Definitely felt like that. And the fact that Sir Jack, who kind of turned the tap on and off, didn't he, with his, with his money well every, every year, but he'd really gone for it a year before. He'd squeezed spent- the golden tip. Yeah, exactly. Spent like at least ten million bringing in like Kennedy, Newton, Blake, Kenny Miller was like three million, and then they were ten points clear in March and still didn't make it after twelve years of not making it. It was just like yeah, this is literally just never going to happen. Um, definitely a bit of a hangover to the start of this season, which I think is is to be expected really. But yeah, we just saw Paul Ince coming on there. I think this must have been his debut, and um, and there's Dennis. Yeah, that was his first appearance. Um, yeah, the two of them. Was, I think it, the, the two of them gave people hope again that, because you know Wolves have been I mean, used to signing players towards the end of their careers, but not of that caliber. Dennis Irwin. I mean, it was such a thrill seeing Dennis Irwin in a Wolves shirt. Just, I, I, I absolutely love Dennis Irwin as a player, and like you'd you'd watch this man win everything, you know, like so it was really exciting to see him in a Wolves jersey. Uh, also, wearing Wolves jersey number eight as well, which I don't, I don't really remember. Number eight? No, I'm. It's got to be one of the more. Yeah, but everybody's got weird numbers. Who had, um, who had number two then? Mark Edworthy maybe. 
Yeah, I think so. Mark Edworthy had come in that summer. Um, let's have a look. I've got it. Sean Connolly. <laughs> Sean Connolly, who didn't play once that season and was released in October, had uh, Dennis <laughs> Irwin's famous <laughs> number two shirt. <laughs> That's great. That's really good. Oh, I, um, I was at this game. This oh, is a good one. So. Alex Ray looks exactly the same now as he did in 2002. It's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. He's kind of ageless, gross. isn't he? I think that's one of the perks of not having oh, any Oh, for yeah, God's sake. Life. I shouldn't say this, but I used to hate Malcolm Christie. Oh, OK. We um, we should be playing the game. How many of these goals would stand with VAR? <laughs> Don't <'Cause>, start. Because <laughs> I bet I bet fifty percent of these aren't goals anymore. Oh, oh, what a goal! Oh. His left foot as well. Alex Ray, love Alex Ray. Yeah, I was about to say that. What a what a great player Alex Ray is. He came down to do Old Gold Club Live last summer and he was such a legend, it was untrue. It's going to be four, it is. Injury time from Kenny Miller. Four, one to one. Is he a good laugh? He had the, he had the whole Grand Theatre in stitches. Like, it's unbelievable, but like, his language is just terrible. <laughs> We're in his room beforehand, me, Chris Owellamo and him when we arrived at the Mount Hotel. And just yeah. every other word was a swear word. I was really worried about going on stage with him. <laughs> Apparently, he taught Mo Kamara English. <laughs> That's <laughs> what? Be a joke. That can't be true, can it? Mo Kamara said he taught him English. <laughs> um, a form of English, anyway. That's, yeah. that's like you teaching Colin Cameron Spanish. It just, it just won't make any sense. <laughs> that's an idea for another feature. <laughs> There's a podcast. Uh, it's, it's, it's lockdown. We've got to come up with, come up with these uh, yeah. different ideas. Well, Alex, Alex Ray will homeschool your kids. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Put it on the list. <laughs> I've lost track of where we are. We seem to be doing all right so far. <laughs> yeah, I, think I think we had a decent, st decent yeah, start, didn't we? Pretty well, um, and then sort of tailed off. I think towards towards Christmas, and then it and then it was um, then they were in a really bad state before some game against Newcastle. Spoiler alert, which comes up later. Paul Butler, by the way, the only man who could carry Nathan Blake that far. <laughs> <laughs> Impressive, isn't it? <laughs> It's um, such an expensively um, assembled team when you look around it as well. Like most of them cost at least a million. You, you, you've got like an embarrassment. The, the one thing which always kind of defined this team to me is the embarrassment of riches in central midfield that was Ray, Cameron, and Ince in a 4 yeah. 4 2. And up front as well, when you look at like Miller and Blake, and we, we had Sturridge and Carlton Colt at one point this season, didn't we? Carlton Colt and Dar, Adam Proudlock. It's like, it's, 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 it is, you know, weapons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dean Sturridge. Butler, Cooper, Naylor. Yeah, it's a pretty good team, really. And George and Dar got injured by this point. Uh, I think Probably. Like most weeks, to be honest, bless him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, I, remember, I remember this one. I remember listening to this on the radio at home and then... Um, I think I think Oakes was injured rather than dropped, and then Matt, Matt Murray came in for his for his debut. There he is. There's Matt Murray. There's only three thousand fans at this game. That's it said three thousand two hundred fans. Oh, yeah. oh, was this when we were we were about to? Yeah, forming MK Dons. God, that looks terrible, doesn't it? That looks Look at horrible. that. So is that is that Sellers Park then? Are they, is that when they were using other grounds? Well, they played at Sellers Park for years, didn't they? Yeah, I think they'd been there about ten years, didn't they? Oh, right. Okay.
It's like watching Olympiacos of the week. <laughs> God, that was weird, wasn't it? So my mates had an idea that he he wrote to the Wolves about to say he wants to. They should hire a DJ who's got. This is what he said: If they're going to finish the Premier League behind closed doors, right? You get a DJ with crowd noises and different chants in the Molyneux, and you kind of live sample the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> and, he, and he thinks it's such a good idea that he, he's written to the Wolves to ask them to to help him set it up. <laughs> he wants so, to set it up himself. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I don't know how he'd carry it out, but it's not. I mean, it's not a bad idea, I guess. <laughs> like just trying trying to pump the atmosphere into the ground. I love the idea that he wrote, you said he wrote to the club. Yeah, did he send them an email the other night? God, look at that Rotherham are up there. Rotherham Wolves. Oh, John Ward. It's, it's not often you see an, an assistant manager in a hoodie. ...and their playoffs or the promotion period we had uh, can have a dodgy start, but I think all in all, when we look back at August, it was possibly a, as good a start as we could hope for, just a slight disappointment at the end, but uh, a nice steady beginning for the season. A nice steady a beginning, says marks, John. Molyneux, a lot of people outside this football club looking it's into ominous. how they're going to cope, how they're going to react to last season. I uh, um, also find it interesting that, um, that you look back on it now, it was a when putting together this start, this DVD review of one of the most special seasons in, in decades, um, Wolves have scoured the world for <laughs> the best narrator out there possible and um, come up with local newspaper correspondent David Instant. <laughs> <laughs> Absolute legend. <laughs> Express and Star peaked at that point for me. <laughs> hey. uh, it's gone downhill the last few months, isn't it, really? Hey. <laughs> Swansea away, the Vetch, Vetch Field. Either of you guys ever get the, there? The Vetch, no, no. Have you? No, it doesn't look great, does it? Oh, I went on one of those things recently, like all those old grounds that have disappeared now. And I've been to a couple. I think I drove past this once on a holiday. Holod holiday to Swansea. <laughs> yes. After the mumbles. <laughs> uh, I think we're probably on our way to Port Talbot. <laughs> One of those seven ninety nine holidays you used to get from the newspaper. <laughs> Lovely view of the steelworks. <laughs> yeah. Look at Alex Ray with an assist there. He's, he's at end products all over the place here. What, what a legend. Alex Ray is yeah. an absolute baller. Yeah, Great like, player. like slightly underrated, I think. I agree, slightly. I agree. He's one of those players where it's like, it'd be your first name on the team sheet. It's just, just like oh, week in, who week was that? Out. Who's that getting pushed over? Was that Butler? No, that's Butler. Butler with a long throw. I forgot he had a long throw. <laughs> what, did he? <laughs> <laughs> sort of like a medium throw. Oh! Yes, Ludo oh, Bale! No way. Bale! Ludo oh, Bale. Ludo Bale. A, a rare, Ludo a rare sighting of Ludo without a, without a bandage on his forehead there. That's like a Pele from Escape to Victory. Look at that fit. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> Can't quite claim that as a bicey, can you? <laughs> he probably did. <laughs> I just spot Ivar in Gamarsen in the middle of the, in the, middle of the box there. Oh, oh God. Bang! Goal. How was Alex Ray not man of the match every week Alex when he was doing this? Fire. Yeah. He's pinging in left foot volleys every other game here. Bosh. By the way, have we noticed Paul Butler's on throw ins and Kenny Miller's on corners? What is going on here? <laughs> yeah, I thought that the one. Maverick. <laughs> <laughs> As the league programme resumed, Selhurst Park again. Oh, mm. another, <laughs> back to Selhurst. Another trip to Selhurst Park, two in two weeks, dear me. <laughs> You'd be furious, wouldn't you? Grim. One of the grimmest stands. Yeah, I was quite quite a fan of this white away kit. Wolves away kits are normally are better for me when they're either black or white, the more traditional ones. This year's kit's immense. Yes. I don't know, man. White is always better for me. It, yeah, it's it's a great kit, although it is it is slightly ruined by the 
Dorito sponsor, which <laughs> oh come which on, remember, man! It, I don't know. It came as a yeah, real oh, shock at the time. I think we'd had we'd had ten years of good year, which like you know, local firm, yeah. very simple black logo. Play it, play it, play it, play it. Is that Inga Marston? What a show of pace that is. Look at him. Go. Oh! Yes! It's gone. It's gone in. <laughs> Amazing that that ended up in the back of the net. <laughs> Made the best of a bad ball there. That's exactly what I wanted. I've gone into commentary mode. <laughs> Great. Yeah, the, um, the Doritos logo came as a bit of a bit of a garish shock at the time. Well, it's, not, it's not I think so. in hindsight. I- but I think after like years and years of t- having to tell people that it's old gold and not orange, and then you stick Doritos on the front of your shirt and it immediately looks orange. It's like it doesn't help the old gold cause, you know. <laughs> they like um, didn't the kit get a lot lighter this year as well? I think oh, they Andy did. Andy Johnson's yeah, such a diver. <laughs> oh, let's give it. Is that, is that Dougie Friedman? Always scored against yeah, I think us. It is, yeah. Always. Didn't Andy Johnson win about twenty penalties in one season? Yes, in the Premier League, didn't he? Yeah, and Scun took the wall himself. Oh, interplay! Smang! Oh. Buried. Did you guys ever? You know, Paul Ince is called the Governor. Yeah. I think I read or was told that, like, that was... He gave himself that nickname. <laughs> like, he, yeah, t- wasn't that when he, was he turned up... Yeah, he turned up at West Ham and he'd tip the governor onto his... This is what I read somewhere. <laughs> he he turned up and he'd tip the governor onto his football boots. And everyone was like, what, what are you doing, Paul? And he was like, um, I'm the governor now, you call me the governor. And everyone was like, oh, if you want it. <laughs> if you want it. <laughs> and it was, we should all try that at work. <laughs> Just... Just tip, just tip X the nickname you want. <laughs> Does Tip X still exist? That's a, good uh, that's a very good question. I think that's, is that Marcus Hanneman in goal for Reading, by the way? It feels like it's too early for Marcus Hanneman. I think that was him. It looked like him. Hang on. I'll look it up while you keep talking. Okay. What about Tip X? <laughs> no, it was Hanneman. I think Eddie Williams plays in this game for them as well. Oh. oh. What an assist. Would Ray, have, Ray, would Ray I was going to say, would Ray have had that as an assist? <laughs> <laughs> they all count. They all count. Look how young Matt Murray is. So fresh. I mean, secretly, he was probably about 30 at this point. <laughs> Oh, oh, what a goal. That should have been ruled out for the celebration. It's got to be the terrible celebration. The, the best goal followed by the worst celebration you've ever seen. Now, that's a compilation I'd watch. <laughs> it's a good montage. I'd watch a compilation of great goals, terrible celebrations. having not lost since the opening day of the season, Dave Jones asked for a big performance from his boys. Not really remembering many of these games so far. Were you a season ticket holder this season? Yeah, I started when I was five. And then I think this was my last year in the family enclosure. Um, on the, I was on the back row with my dad for many years. Back row of the family enclosure so we could stand up. I was going to say, that's to a get great a, place to be. Yeah, it was a good view. Well, they used to get away fans in the boxes behind you, which wasn't great. Uh, oh, that's a great goal. Strength of Nathan Blake. Yeah. Mm. I always think he's the kind of player you'd hate to mark. Like, you know, when you're lining up and you look and you think, God, I've got to mark Nathan Blake for 90 minutes. It'd be a, it'd be a nightmare. Here he is again. Point in. Yeah, just direct it, Nathan. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Touch. Oh. Oh. That's it. Nice, filthy. Why wasn't that in the montage at the start? I mean, that's the goal of the season so far, I think. It's the best we've seen. Beautiful. Look at that. Done him. Right 
Dean, no. D- Dino had gone on that. Remember he gone on that mental run a year earlier? He scored like 20 and 25 or something. He's a good player, man. He just gets forgotten about. Yeah. yeah. Oh, this is a rout. Mascots in celebrations. You've got, you've got to love that. We don't, don't see enough of that in Molyneux these days. Goal music? Thoughts? No. No. No, no, no. no, no. They, they did this for a few years. I remember, they had, oh, was it I Feel Good by James Brown? Yes. Yeah. That's and then it. that pig bag, the pig bag one that Middlesbrough used to use, they had that as well. But like, there was a period when I, I thought it worked, when you had like Sylvan Song or George Alacobi. <laughs> or, or was it Minder? Was it Minder for Dave Edwards? <laughs> Minder? I don't was remember the, that. Was it the Minder theme tune? Well, I could that. feel so good for you. What, yeah, when Dave it. Edwards scores? Yeah, yeah. That know. never happened. <laughs> it did. It definitely did. <laughs> unless I dreamt it. <laughs> <laughs> it's the what, kind of so, dream I would have, but I'm sure, so, I'm sure it happened. So, so every time Dave Edwards scores, they play the Minder theme? <laughs> yeah. I don't know why. I'm going to try and find out now. <laughs> I, I, I swear I don't remember this. <laughs> Oh, TC's on. Oh, yeah, TC. I always forget that he kind of predated um, Mick McCarthy. still come to terms with that, and we used it a couple of times. And, um, you know, we had, we had some different performances through it. Um, but, you know, the, those things happen. And, um, he always looks like he's got the weight of the world on his shoulders, I always think. <laughs> <laughs> just, like, just like world weary. <laughs> Okay, yeah, Minder. Yes, they're talking about it on, a, on an old Molyneux mix thread here on Google. Yep, Minder. Yeah, I didn't dream it. No, no explanation given. Amazing. Oh, high drama coming apparently. Oh, oh far is going to skip straight to the penalties. <laughs> Clearly a classic game. Hang on, hang on. Did, did this game finish? Did this game finish four all? They've gone straight to penalty shootout. Irwin Connor missed many penalties in his career. Oh. He did. There were eight goals. Irwin just skipped it all. <laughs> but, but this, I mean, this DVD, this season review is not short. Um, you know, the, yeah. the back extending, the, extending its length, but yeah, they've missed it. could have taken a minute off the opening montage to get those goals in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, first battle of the season with the blades. Oh, spoiler alert. They had, um, yes, George. They had a good. They had a really good team that year. I think. I think they reached both cup semis this season. You know, United. I seem to remember. Neil Warnock. Cross, Didn't they? Was it Arsenal they took to? Or was that later one? They played Arsenal. Who did they lose to? The fake up semis, I think. That was not ultra. Were they all at Cardiff? Those semis. Uh, no, they would have still been at like Villa Park and that, wouldn't they? Yeah, or Old Trafford. Old Trafford. Yeah. That's where FA Cup semi-final should be. Agree. Totally agree. Yeah, they reached them. They reached the League Cup and FA Cup semi-finals that season. That's mad. Oh, that's a good header. And they, they reached both. They, they reached. So they reached the playoffs. Spoiler alert. And that's both mad. Cup semis. And their top scorer that season was Michael Brown, of course. <laughs> Michael Brown's a good guy. He did a lot of the co-coms for the Europa League playoff games. Qualifiers, <laughs> oh, okay. And TV loved it. Loved coming to Wolves. They're a proper dirty team, Sheffield United. We'll come back to that. Live on Sky this one. Oh, Colin Cameron. Oh, I love Colin Cameron. In the team as well. What He's another one, though. He, Colin Cameron was. He was never the age that he claimed to be at the time. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Him and Look Carl, though, you just can't tell. Dave Jones must have had some kind of scientific experiment going, because Dennis Irwin was 36, supposedly, when he arrived. 
And as Tim keeps saying, spoiler alert, he plays about 50 appearances this year. That's just not going to happen. <laughs> oh, what God. a finish. Nathan Blake had been around about 10 years before this as well. Yeah, it's an old team, isn't it? Uh, like, it is an old team. Well, Dennis Irwin, Ince was supposedly 34 when he arrived, about to turn 35. Um, Butler, who was probably about 40 in real life. <laughs> in real life. <laughs> yeah, you just had yeah. uh, Matt Murray and um, the perennially young Lee Naylor bringing down the average age. Of course, yeah. Lee Naylor always felt like a teenager, didn't he? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Always felt like he was still a teenager. <laughs> I've never seen facial hair on that on that man's on that man's chin. <laughs> Still has trouble getting served. Um, he's the kind of guy who like he'd struggle to get into Atlantis. <laughs> <laughs> I heard a story you, about Robbie Keane. Did you hear this story about Robbie Keane? Where when he'd so he was like he was in the queue for Atlantis, and a bouncer went up to him and said, "You're Robbie Keane, aren't you?" And he said, "Yeah." He said, well, I know you're 17, so off you go. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know if that's true or not. Brilliant. I don't know if that's true or not, but I like to believe it's true. Just him, Jerry and Lescott and Matt Murray just in a queue. <laughs> just trying to blag their way in. <laughs> it's like, all right, Matt, oh, you true. might Les be in goal now. and you, you might be six foot seven, but you're still not coming in. <laughs> not a strong celebration. Old school pile on. Just well, it's like a cuddle on the floor. Oh, I hate that was at all. There's, there's, there's no shortage of goals in this team, is there? No, 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 no. Murray had to throw it out because he can't kick it. <laughs> He'll kill me for saying that. <laughs> oh, yes, George. Look at that goal. This. Brilliant goal. George and Dar could have stayed fit throughout his career. He would have been unbelievable. Some of the goals yeah, he scored. Yeah. There's one coming up later this season, and then is it the Preston game this season as well when he runs from his own penalty box? Phenomenal. Cameron's <laughs> effort. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> By the way, something you don't see very often these days, a lot of long sleeves on action. A lot of long sleeves on show. Yeah. This this was the um this was the baggy shirt era as well. It's a, shirts yeah. are very baggy. There's yeah, there's so, some players that that needed it. Um, it's, right. it's kind of um it's a kind of good good fashion for the football supporter cuz like <laughs> yeah. It's hard to get a it's hard to get a flattering <laughs> shirt these days. Do you know what I mean? It's like I don't like it. Yeah, these were very, these were these were very popular in Wolverhampton. Yeah, exactly. That's it. You need a nice baggy shirt. No, no footballers are so hench. It's like you can't you can't buy a football top without looking like you know. Was it Spurs and Leeds had those Kappa ones that absolutely oh skin tight leave nothing to the imagination? Brutal. Absolutely brutal, yeah. That's like skins, aren't they? Um, anyone, any idea what's going on here? <laughs> is it, is it, is it <laughs> funny? Brown Brown scores the walls, it's 2 0, and celebrates in front of the mass hordes that have made the journey down from Wolverhampton. Tell you what, HD cannot come in soon enough. <laughs> oh, what a ball. Oh, what a pass that is. Yes. It's it. Oh, my God. Some great goals here. Was that a cross or was it a... Uh... <laughs> Is that a cross come shot? <laughs> oh, oh, you've, you've, you've got to look a, love a pillar in the way at football ground. Look at that. Hat trick. 
three goals for Nathan Blake and three wins in a row for the Wanderers. After struggling to find form early in the month, Wolves' nine points from three games had lifted them back into eight. Look at that plus 14 goal difference, though. Some of the teams... That's are amazing, isn't it? Chillingham. We, we, we were struggling to find consistency and good players and sometimes players have to you know, go through that. You don't want them to go through it, but it does happen. Um, but we stayed firm in our beliefs in what we were trying to do and um, it was a case of the players and the staff and everybody associated with the football side and having to come through the bad run um, and learn from it as we've always maintained, learn from your mistakes and everything else. Doesn't really sound like he's too excited, does he? In fact, he never really did. Dave Jones, bless him. But maybe he's just leaving himself somewhere to go for later in the season. <laughs> <laughs> He, 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 he knows he needs to, to bring the drama. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> to be fair, he's probably got a bit of a stiff neck by this point from having to look sideways for all this length of this interview. <laughs> Such a good goal by Colin Cameron. You know, when you think back to this time, and like. Yeah. It's hard to think how they fitted all of these players in at times. Yeah, I think they had a lot of injuries from memory. I mean, Mark Kennedy was around. I don't think we've seen Mark Kennedy yet. He was out for a while. No, I was going to say, Dar he comes back Dar's in the second in half of the season, doesn't he? Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, your, your first 11 was probably Irwin, Butler, Lescott, Naylor in front of Murray. And then Newton, two of Ray, Cameron and Ince in the middle, Kennedy on the left, and then probably Blake and Miller up front with Sturridge and Andar in reserve. It's a pretty yeah. strong team. It's a pretty, that's great to have got Sturridge and Andar on the bench. So when did think, we get caught and Cole, caught and Cole came in on loan, didn't he? Is that, is that after Christmas? Yeah, I think Dave, Dave Jones decided that um, seven strikers just wasn't enough. So, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I think it's the end of November. I think we're coming up to it. Mark Kennedy, I think, on his old Gold Club episode, said I think he was really badly injured and he kind of didn't train and just played in the playoffs the season before. And that made his injuries really yeah, worse. That's why he's not been around. Which is, um, they signed Kevin Cooper on, I think, what was the old deadline day in March? From Wimbledon, I think. The end of the previous season, because Kennedy was injured. Express and Star. Advertising ball days. <laughs> oh, it's amazing how um, how far from the pitch the fans are as well, back then. Yeah. Yeah, I remember when I... When I was a kid, I did a Wolves uh, like training school, and you got like we you could play a full kind of junior game of football between the stand and the pitch, like the old Molyneux. It's miles <laughs> away. And Portsmouth spent loads of money this season. Yeah, that's Paul Merson, isn't it? I think. Yeah, this is when they were in their spend spend stage, wasn't it? Would Rudnap have been manager then, Tim? Yeah, I think yeah, he took him up, didn't he? I say oh, Tim because I'm cash. presuming Tom was at uni, so like me, he would have just been drunk through a lot of this period. <laughs> yeah, this is a bit of a, yeah, this is it's good, it's good to be reminded of what actually happened. <laughs> Lovely goal. They're doing quite well. Though. So they've drawn this one, but they seem to win him <clears throat> quite a few at home. But I remember around this time, Molyneux was such like a toxic place to play football. Like it used to be a recurring theme, speaking yeah. to players at the time, like how you, how they've got to win the crowd over in the first half an hour. Like atmosphere was just coming more different to how it is now. Absolutely, yeah. I, I, it's so true, I'd, and I'd forgotten that. I was, I was talking to my brother the other day about it, and it was like. You know, obviously there'd be noise around kickoff, and then it, if if we weren't playing well in that first fifteen twenty minutes, it'd be so turned, it'd be so negative, so negative. Yeah, you, you can see it on like there's a few games 
old games where they've got like either half an hour highlights or like the full match from like the 90s on YouTube. And if you watch it, like just a mundane passage of play in the middle of the park and like Carl Robinson will play like a backward pass and the South Bank will be like, what? Get him off. <laughs> Get him off. <laughs> but it was just it was just that, that build up of of years and years of overspending and under, underachieving. I think the whole the whole place was going a bit mad really. Oh was that this oh, Highfield Road. Road. This, is, oh, this was a good win this was. I remember this one. I think Alex Ray scores. <laughs> Alex Ray was miles out then. <laughs> Absolutely miles. Oh, Kennedy's out. back. <laughs> oh, there he is. Instinct of a striker for Jolien. He'll love that. <laughs> sure, Alex Ray comes from nowhere to hit a long ranger because the. The way end was down here on the right hand side. Here we go. They sit. Oh, yes. <laughs> they sit, and then he comes running for the away end. I remember this. Oh, Alex Ray. Look how pumped he is. He is having a great season. Genuinely, he would be my player of the year so far. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Does anyone remember who was player of the season this season? Um, oh, was it Les? Was it Les Scott? Lescott. I think it was, you know. Yeah, I think it was Lescott. Lescott away. Irwin unable to control and all of a sudden Forrester getting numbers. He used to love games against Herwin. um Forrest. All, always a good atmosphere, always well backed, usually a decent game. Yes. Oh, this is like a classic Forest team as well. Jack Lester. Always used to play as them on um, Championship Manager and stuff because they always had loads of good young oh, really? players. <laughs> oh! Go on, Ken. Yes! Yeah. He was good at that. He never like he never overhit a shot. Ne never really blazed one into Rosehead. It's just good place. Composure, composure. Mm. Did you boys ever have other players' names? Did you have like when you had a wool shirt? Did you have the players' names on the back of your shirt, or did you have your own name on the back of your shirt, or did you have no um, name on the back of your shirt? I, I, I never had a name. I always, I would always have number nine and just leave it at that for bully. <laughs> for bully. <laughs> He's not dead. <laughs> <laughs> I'd wear a black armband <laughs> for bully. No, but you know what I mean? Because he, yeah. cause his ear is all... Yeah, yeah. Just The uh, number nine just said it all. Yeah, I like that. I like that. Uh, what's the age? What's the age that you're allowed to still have your own name on? <laughs> well, I... Um, I started playing. I mean, if, you, if, you, if you're if you're a footballer, you can be forty, I think, and still have it as fun. The game ended Forest's impressive unbeaten run and extended Wolf sequence to eight, but injuries were now a cause of concern as Dave Jones saw his side stretched. Oh, injuries now a cause of concern. I'm not, I'm not a fan of that music in between in between matches, but it's very ominous. <laughs> oh, it's on, it's on Sky Sports. Sky Sports Extra Live. It's <laughs> <laughs> it looks like looks like they picked a classic as well, judging by the first yeah. highlight. <laughs> So the worst thing about this as well, boys, this is the second time that we've been to Rotherham on this DVD. And the other one had eight goals in the game and we didn't get any of them. <laughs> That's such a good point. <laughs> oh, 
also, has anyone else noticed that the red button is in the bottom corner? Yeah, I was just yeah. looking. <laughs> <laughs> Did I'm we just record pr- this off the TV? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I know Sir Jack was, like, cutting back on spending at the time, but <laughs> did we just steal this off a Digibox? <laughs> We're getting a lot of uh, footage from this game. <laughs> this is, like, one of the longest games we've had so far. <laughs> Well, that was worth it. <laughs> Still <laughs> nil nil. Just <laughs> give it the full two and a half minutes. <laughs> Look at that goal difference compared to everybody else. Well, I guess that, that's a sign of a good team, isn't it? You know they're going to come good. Yeah. Oh, John's back in his hoodie. <laughs> That doesn't even look like it's official wear. That's just his own personal it's one. His own, it's, it's, his own, it's his own range. <laughs> <laughs> just called Ward wear. J- JW. December dawned with a difficult clash as fourth place Norwich were the visitors. Let's see what uh, let's see what away kit Norwich have got this season. Always a shocker. Light blue. What is that? Is that sky blue? Kennedy got enough on it. Good save made for for Cole who scores. First goal for the lone E from Chelsea. I got the train up the other day for the Norwich game and their fans were super polite, very civilised. <laughs> it's like, well, it's quite, quite good company. What were you expecting? <laughs> yeah, no, that's it. I guess that's it. Isn't it? <laughs> Just handing out Plowman's lunches on the carriage. <laughs> Delia. Delia doing the catering. There he is. Yeah, so has someone got injured for us to get Carton on loan? Because that feels like a, uh, if you've got Sturridge, Blake, I guess George yeah, and Darmot. Must have been some injuries. It's very lavish otherwise. Well, that was Cooper, so. <clears throat> We've got enough like wide players if Kennedy's back at this point. Oh, look at him go. Yeah. Oh, he scored as well. I missed that. Got a feeling it's going to get a lot worse from here on in. We, what, we have a yeah. bit... We have, we have, yeah, that's it. We've got to have a big, big mid-season dip now, haven't we? Oh, that's a great goal from the Coventry player manager that gives Coventry the lead. Still got it. How old's Gary McAllister now? I mean, 70? How old is he? Yeah, he must be. Must be in his 50s there. Put it this way I'd be surprised if he wasn't getting a letter about staying in during this period. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely stuff. In a traditional smash and grab manner, Coventry had stolen the point. And Wall's 10 match and beat run. Like, Tim, you'll know about this probably better than anybody else. Like, are we getting to the point? It's around this time when. Doesn't Sir Jack say that, like, he's reminded Dave Jones of his responsibilities or something? Yeah, I remember that. I think um must have been mid table going into the new year I think and Sir Jack who like wasn't a regular at this point I think he's mostly based in the Bahamas um, was like yeah we've told Dave or no I think I think it was like Dave promised us we'd be, we'd be in the top six and we're not so I'm not happy <laughs> in, in a typical <laughs> su- su- subtle manner from Sir Jack <laughs> anyway, he wouldn't have been alone though right no nobody yeah you just got to remember that historical context of 
12 years in the same division and spending, I don't know. A lot of money, getting, yeah. up to, getting up to 100 million on transfers maybe over that time. Obviously, like a ridiculous amount and just managers coming and going, Turner, Taylor, McGee, Lee, and then Jones. Jones had had like a great reputation at Southampton. Um, and it was considered they'd had the best squad in many, many years and probably the best manager as yeah. well and it still wasn't happening. So... I don't think I don't think Dave would probably say himself. I don't think he'd have lasted too much longer if um, if this run continued. Is this his second? This is his second season. Um, the second full season. About two year, two years at this point. I remember he joined in January, two thousand and one. Yeah. I think so. Yeah, coming up to two calendar years. <laughs> Why have we got Burnley commentary on this? I don't know, they're loving it, are they? Just in between two players to Glenn Little, Westy ever willing, comes outside of him to give him a little bit of a we recorded the Rotherham game off the telly and now we're just taking Burnley's feed for this. <laughs> it's just been... Imagine if the whole se the whole video was clipped together from other clubs' review DVDs. <laughs> <laughs> imagine if that was the cheapest way to do it. <laughs> just clipping out two games from everyone else's reviews. <laughs> Oh. Is that Butler? <laughs> oh, massive deflection. I'm not giving him that. <laughs> he wasn't really playing that, that much, I think, at this point. I think um, I think he got dropped at one point because he was cl he was club captain, and um, yeah, there was a there was a big deal made of it at the time. He tells a story of um, telling Dave Jones not to sub him at half time to give him like two minutes so he can walk off in front of all the fans who are booing him. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> oh, Carlton. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I bet Carlton Cole's really glad <laughs> that of all the spurned opportunities this season, well, <laughs> they chose to put that one in the, the season review. <laughs> Five minutes into the second half. really do need to recover quickly from the going a goal behind certainly not deserved they've uh, been the better side wolves so far he's on dart it's it he's oh good oh telling you man George and Dar's numbers would have been unreal if he could have stayed fit in his career yeah totally oh man Oh, beautiful that is. Cool. Yeah. And if George and Dar's fit, why have we got Carlton Cole? Who's injured? That's <laughs> that's what I'm trying to work out. Like <laughs> I don't, I'm just trying to work out why we went after Carlton Cole on loan. Is Kenny Miller Kenny Miller's on? Kenny Miller's not injured, is he? Yeah. I'm gonna go well. Oh in C. Dear me. Oh, oh no, 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 no. Oh, you, oh, you can tell why Sir Jack's mad. It's, it's all gone to pot, isn't it? Kenny Miller is an unused sub in this game. That's bizarre. Boys, I think that's a good point to take a pause on our watch of this season re-review. <laughs> okay, okay. It's not gone that well so far, but I've got a feeling it might get better. Might be right. Oh, yeah. Okay, let's see, let's see. <laughs> 